Hello there, brothers and sisters on Living Stones Church on the Internet. We gather again around God's good word and we do pray that each one of us may have that spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we understand what the Lord has to say to us through his good word. We need it, don't we? We need God's word in our lives because this world doesn't give it to us. We need it from the Lord himself. So we look to the Lord and we read uh, in Ephesians that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And brothers and sisters, don't we need that? We, we really do. And I hope that you are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, for God's word, for the Lord, as the deer pants for the streams of water. So our hearts pant for the Lord. So this is Ephesians chapter 1, but let's continue a little bit. This is verse 17 that we're reading here. So, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Ephesians 1, 17 through to 21, King James there. So, not only in this world, but in the world which is to come, or the age which is to to come we see a differential there don't we of this world and the one which is to come we think of life here on earth as biological life don't we you know we see it around us everywhere on planet earth it seems even in the depths of the sea we find life um, and it's biological life, physical life, that we look around and say, oh yeah, that's alive, or that is dead. And we understand life and death through what we see around us. But the scriptures want, want us to understand that, of course, but there is a bigger meaning, and the Lord is able to give us that revelation and wisdom to see what true life is and what death is according to the scriptures. It's far more than mere biological life, far more. And Jesus said, do not fear those who can kill only the body. Don't fear them. But fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. So we see a big differential there, don't we, between biological life and spiritual life that God gives. And w people don't understand life here on earth, what makes it move forward, what makes cells divide. The, the people who work in those fields look for answers. What's the principle of life? Well, we understand through the scriptures that life comes from God, who is life. And so 
we see this as we look through the scriptures. Proverbs 3 tells us that blessed are those who find wisdom. This is verse 13. Those who gain understanding. We are blessed if we do find wisdom and understanding. You are blessed. For she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honour. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and those who hold her fast will be blessed. So we see here that the scriptures are good for biological life also for we know it's as long life is in her right hand it will help us move forward in this life um, as a general rule we know there are exceptions like Abel didn't have a, a he was killed wasn't he by his brother Cain Stephen was martyred James was martyred but generally speaking the scriptures here tell us that wisdom is good for this life and for the life which is to come. The tree of life here we read about in verse 18 of Proverbs 3, the tree of life. Now the tree of life features early on in the scriptures, doesn't it? And God wants us to understand this tree of life. Okay, so Adam, um, let's have a look at this one. Oh yeah, okay, so Adam was told, um, have I got that scripture? Maybe I haven't got that one. So Adam was told that on the day he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil would be the day he would die. He was told that, wasn't he? So yeah, that's. let's have a look. Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die that's what god said of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that's not the tree of life of course so um jesus said whoever lives and believes in me shall never die so what do we understand here because we still die a physical death so jesus must have been talking about some other kind of life that is the message of the bible humans who are made in god's image can partake of the life of god if they choose to do so. So the scripture says um, they are darkened in their understanding. Let me show you this. And separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Can you see that? The life of God there, look. What a phrase. And, and oh, what tragedy that people are cut off from the life of God. But we can partake in the life of God. That life that continues we can be partakers of it. Now, God didn't create us sinful. He cre but he did create us with a free will. And free will is exactly what it says. It's free to do wrong or right. We, it does what it says on the tin. So, when God first started to create life on 
earth and the life was uh, well we have many fossils don't we in from those early days we have fossils then it, if we it's a fossil it must mean the creature died um, you don't have fossils of living creatures uh, and as l life got bigger and le later in time we have fossils that are a, a larger life too and if we have fossils then that means those creatures died too so God gives and God takes away. That's the rule. And that rule applies to humans too. However, each human has an opportunity to grasp eternal life. We understand life and death from what we see around us. Biological life teaches us something important about true life, pure life, the life of God, that which we may partake in. So the universe that we live in, time and space, it, it was never meant to last forever. It's slowly running down, isn't it? We can see that as entropy takes its toll and the stars slowly run out of fuel. And the Apostle Paul said, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So it seems that humans were never meant to live in this universe forever. Now, if we think about Adam in the garden, he was not going to live forever. He needed to eat from the tree of life to do that. After Adam disobeyed God's command, God said, Now the man has become like one of us, knowing good or evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. This is important because we note that until Adam ate from the tree of life, he didn't have eternal life. But it also teaches us that sinful Adam could not partake of the tree of life in, it, in his present form. Adam would, wouldn't, Adam wouldn't have lived forever in the natural state that God made him. So he needed that life from God. So as we read through the first three chapters of Genesis, we're taken by surprise at the end of chapter three, aren't we, if you read it, when we find out the tree of life is capable of giving Adam eternal life. We only get to hear that part of the story as Adam is being ejected from the garden. That's the way God planned the drama that took place in the Garden of Eden, that we may understand what true life is. And we don't read of that God told Adam and Eve to obtain eternal life when they were in the Garden. God used what took place in the Garden to teach us something important about the life he wants us to partake in, which is far higher than than simple biological life. The tree of life stood in the garden that God had planted. God told Adam he was free to eat from any tree in the garden, including the tree of life, only if the fruit from one tree was prohibited. But no one got to eat from the tree of life in the garden, in the story we're told in Genesis. Or did they? Because Jesus proclaimed himself to be the life and, and said, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. John six fifty three. So maybe we can still eat from the tree of life. It's not without reason that we're encouraged to taste and see that the Lord is good. We see the symbolism here, don't we? So the life of God is open for humans to partake in. Think of that, the life of God. We can partake in the life of God. He who needs no material apparatus to support his being the life at the center of reality, the life of God, the effervescent fountain of life, the river of life. We get lots of different pictures 
in the scriptures. So, um, when the Lord spoke to Moses, he, he, the Lord revealed his name as I am. That sums it up. I am. He who is, who was, and who is to come. The great I am. He is Yahweh. And he who needs no apparatus at all, artificial means of support, uh, he is. And God explained this to Moses, but he didn't explain it to Adam, and he didn't explain it to Abraham. In fact, Abraham was quick to prepare lunch for Yahweh. You remember when the Lord and his two companions came on when in the midday time and Abraham was at his tent and Abraham was quick to prepare food as if the Lord needed food. So the Lord said, I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob as God Almighty but by my name, the Lord, I did not myself make myself fully known to them. So when we see the word Lord in capital letters in the Old Testament, it refers to Yahweh or Y-H-W-H, what we call the Tetragrammaton, four letters. And it's in, translated in many English Bibles as Lord in capital letters. But the Hebrew is uh, Yahweh, or some people say Jehovah, don't they? Although Jehovah is kind of a, a hybrid of two names. Um, it's, an, it's a hybrid of the word, the word Yahweh, or Y-H-W-H, with Adonai, the word for Lord. So... Um, but in English Bibles, it is Lord. But it's important for us to know that. We're talking about the name of God here. And the Lord did not make himself fully known to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and those before. But when Moses came, we understand that God's name is I Am. That's what the Lord spoke to Moses at the burning bush. And I am um, is uh, first person, isn't it? I am. So that's first person. In third person way of speaking, Yahweh is he who is. And that's what it means, he who is. So that, that's where we get the name uh, YHWH, Yahweh, or Lord in capital letters. So Shakespeare said, to be or not to be? That is the question. And he was correct, because God is. He always was and he, he always will be. To be means if we to be means we are therefore we have the title don't we human being to be there was a time when we were not though now God is also being but there was never a time when he was not he needs no material mechanism or spiritual supplement to sustain his being. Uh, we are beings because of his being. Do you see that? That's important for us to understand. That in him we live and move and have our being. Acts 17, 28. So the Lord said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, who is, who was, and who is to come. Revelation 1 verse 8. So in the Lord's Prayer, we say, Our Father, who are or art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we notice the two words, who are. 
our Father who are in heaven. In English, that's the way we express the verb to be. That's in second person, isn't it? You who are. So, our Father who are. So, in the first person, the uh, verb to be is conjugated as I am. And in the second person, it's you are. And in the third person, it's he who is. So, whatever person we express it in, that's God's name and why we should hallow it. Jesus said, I have made your name known to them. John 17, 26. God is. So the gradual process of knowing God begins in chapters 1 and 2 of Genesis. And we see this gradual revelation coming. And it's important that the life of God, he who is comes to us. Can you see that now? We need the life of God. Not mere biological life. Not enough food to keep this body sustained. Jesus didn't seem to worry too much about food, did he? He fasted for 40 days. And life comes from elsewhere. The disciple says, if someone bought you food, Lord, he says, I have food that you do not know of. Jesus saw the the sustainer of life in a different way. So, um, when your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. This is Jeremiah speaking here, but we, we do see parallels, of course. Um, but, but let's look at it from Jeremiah's point of view. He said, I bear your name. Now, what is the name? Lord God Almighty. So there we, there we have it. Yahweh, um, God, Elohim, um, Almighty. So we bear the name of the Lord. He who is, I am. To have a, that name upon us is a wonderful, it's wonderful that we may bear God's name. The Lord told, said to Moses, <coughs> excuse me, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you. You see all the capital letters there. So we're talking about the name of God. And be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Can you see the importance of having the name of God upon us? It's that we might partake in the life of God. And that is a wonderful um, privilege that is open to human beings. And so we see Jesus tries to explain this to us early on in his ministry, doesn't he? Nicodemus comes and he says, you must be born again. And Nicodemus says, what do you mean? Because Nicodemus is thinking of biological life. How is it possible? And, and, but Jesus is talking about the life of God that we may partake in. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. So we pray our hearts will not be hard, but that we will not be separated from the life of God. That's terrible. But that we may partake in the life of God. Okay, so Moses, um, he spoke, didn't he? Let me just see if I can find this, because we looked at this last week. So I should have this somewhere. Um, Let's just check. Um, Okay, yeah, this is it. This day 
I called the heavens and the earth, this is Moses speaking, as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now, choose life so that you and your children may live. And Moses here is talking about a deeper life than what we see around us. You can see the deeper message here, can't you? Call the heavens and the earth as witnesses. So we have this opportunity in life to live for this world or to live to that life that comes from above the true life of God and it's so much higher than this world that God the Lord says if anyone loves this world he's an enemy of God because it's there's corruption in the world creation is groaning under the pains of childbirth of the as we come to the end of this age and ready to move into the next age for God will create a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. And it's so we don't live for this world. We live for the life of God that he has put within me and the kingdom of heaven. Okay. So I think that's probably enough. Um, Next week, I would like to move on to just a summary of Psalm 119, if that's okay. Because we've been going through that, haven't we, on Living Stones, with different stanzas, 22 stanzas each week. And we've finished them now. So I'd like you to summarize that. Okay, so that's next week. Okay, so shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word, which explains to us what true life really is. And you, Lord Jesus, said that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And we praise you, Lord, that that life is found in you. And we come to the Father through you, Lord. And we boldly approach the throne of grace. You have give, given us that privilege, Lord, that life within us, that we may have partaken the life of God. Hallelujah. We are blessed, Lord. And we pray that those around us will also share in the life of God, that that life may shine from us, we pray. Lord, that we may let our light shine, the life of God, the true life that never ends, it had no beginning and will know no end. Lord, may we partake of that life, we pray. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so on um, Wednesday, March the 7th, we, there's a ladies um, get together on Zoom on Living Stones. So, and Lenise will be sharing a few thoughts in, in that meeting. So ladies, please come along with a cup of coffee and uh, chat. It, it'll be good. And um, we, we praise God that uh, we can have this fellowship together, don't we? It's important that we fellowship and integrate with each other. Um, okay, so on Friday... Um, we have uh, um, oh, I can't, can't, what, what is it on Friday it's, we've gone through all the stanzas haven't we is it digging deeper I can't Jean is shouting to me from upstairs I can't hear what she's saying <laughs> ok but anyway on Sunday um, we've got a new subject starting on um, Sunday live and nine o'clock Sunday morning and it's about objects objects that we learn something from in the scripture and I think the first one is cisterns and then on Sunday 
evening Valerie will be speaking to us on zoom at five o'clock Greenwich Mean Time and also Jeannie has something to share also so we we thank the Lord that we are able to help and support one another don't we and pray for one another and encourage one another and have a word for each other a word in season is like settings uh, apples of gold in settings of silver so that's lovely isn't it okay then <clears throat> so god bless you and be with you and make his face to shine upon you in the name of the lord praise god okay have a good day bye